One of the more significant concepts of object orientation is separation of interface and implementation. We've already said that, in some ways, the fundamental aspect of object orientation is this thing called encapsulation. The ability to take data, our vowels, and mix them in with defs in a way that allows us to create objects that join both of them. And so we have the methods that work on the data. We've also seen that we can make some of that stuff private, whether it's data, or actually probably in the case of our student, uh, we had private data, we also put a private method inside of here. So what does separation of interface and implementation mean? Well, the interface is the stuff that's public. This is the stuff that outside code comes to depend upon. If I change the nature of add quiz, if I were to delete add quiz after I've been working on this program for a while, I would break a lot of other code because a lot of code would potentially be calling this method. And if I change it in any way, if I change what type gets passed in, if I change the number of arguments passed in, if I change the, uh, the type that's returned, I will potentially break that outside code. So once you have, so your public interface is something that you're kind of bound to, and it's not like you can never change it, but changing it becomes more challenging. And if it's something like a large public library, for example, the, the Scala or the Java API libraries, are their public interface is almost impossible to change at this point because there are many, many millions of lines of code that are using them. And if you break that public interface, you're going to break a whole lot of code. On the other hand, that doesn't mean you can't change how things are done. We have the ability to change how add quiz works here. Right now I'm using a list. I could actually very easily change this to an array and then alter the code that's in here. I would also alter the code that calculates the average for the quizzes. And the outside world wouldn't know anything about it. Because this stuff is private, the, it's, it has, contains details that are not significant to the outside world. And in reality, what we want to do is we want to make certain that our interface and the details of the implementation are as separate as possible so that we can alter the implementation. Another example of this would be in our Vector2D. We made the decision early on to use an X and a Y. But we discussed the fact that you could also represent this class with an R and a theta a magnitude and a direction. And it's potentially an interesting exercise for, uh, for the people who are learning about this to go through and make that change. Make it so that this class works by actually storing an R and a theta instead of the X and Y. It could still then have defs to give you X and Y, which would be calculated from R and theta. But it would wind up being implemented in a different way. And all of these methods for adding and subtracting and whatnot would also be implemented in a different way. But the goal would be the outside code wouldn't care that this the public interface, the plus sign would still add the vectors, the minus sign would still subtract the vectors, etc. And as long as all of those things still did what they were supposed to, as long as they adhered to the contract of their interface, everything would still be happy in the code and, and it would all work the way that we expect that it should. We will see more examples of this over time. In particular, we're going to make some data structures. We're gonna have these things called abstract data types, and we're gonna implement those abstract data types using multiple different approaches, okay, to help illustrate to you the fact that we can change the underlying implementation without breaking the code that uses it as long as we keep the interface consistent.